So when the statues for the Buddha Hall arrived a few months ago, I was really inspired to see the statue of Mahaprajapati Gotami. I'm just going to call her Gotami. That's a lot easier for me to say. <laughs> and I wanted to know more about her life. So I started reading this book called The Woman Who Raised the Buddha, which is a biography of Gotami by Wendy Garling. And I've been sharing stories from this book um, in the f a few BBCs. So today I'd like to share the story of her ordination by the Buddha. And this uh, was a very important event because it inaugurated the Bhikshuni uh, order, which continues to this day. And uh, this, this is very significant for us who are nuns. Um, so in one previous BBC, I told the story of the Buddha's first visit home to Kapilavastu after he attained enlightenment. So that was about 12 years after his enlightenment. And during that visit, he, um, he gave teachings and his family, including his father, King Shuddhadana, and Gotami, his stepmother, uh, received teachings and also many other Shakya people people from the Shakya clan, uh, received teachings and became his followers. And also some attained realizations. So it's said that um, during that time, Gotami herself became a stream mentor, meaning an Arya in our tradition. And then the Buddha made a second visit home about five years after that. Um, and this was at a time when the, the Shakya clan were, were having a conflict with their neighbors, the Kolayan, Kolian clan, I don't know how to say it. Um, they lived on the other side of the river. And so they were fighting over rights to the water. And they'd been arguing for a while, and they were on the verge of war. You know, the men had their weapons, and they were ready to go to war with each other. <clears throat> so the Buddha came and spoke to them and got them to think in a reasonable way. So he restored sanity and peace to the situation. And so the men put down their weapons. And so many of the men were inspired by the Buddha's words that they wanted to become monks. So 500 men, <laughs> 200 from each side, 200 sh 250 Shakyans and 250 Kolayans um, became monks all at once. And their wives also had the wish to join the monastic community, but at that point in time it wasn't possible because there wasn't an order of nuns. And it was shortly after that that uh, the Buddha's father, King Shuddhadana, passed away, and that left uh, Gotami a widow. And she too had the wish to uh, become a monastic. So she and uh, the 500 wives, <laughs> the 500 um, Shakya women, uh, approached the Buddha, who was staying, he was still staying in the area. Uh, at that time, he was staying in the Banyan Grove, outside of Kapilavastu. And um, on behalf of all the other women, Gotami requested the Buddha for ordination. And initially, the Buddha declined. And various texts uh, have various versions of his response. So I'll just read one, which is from the um, Madhyama Agama. So there he says, Wait, wait, Gotami. Do not have the thought that women leave the home out of faith and become homeless to train in the path in this right teaching and discipline. Gotami, you shave off your hair like this, put on monastic robes, and for your whole life practice the holy life in purity, brahmacharya. So it's interesting that he said, wait. Yeah. He didn't say, no, never. You can never do that. I will never allow that. He just said, wait and then advised her to shave her head, wear monastic robes, and then continuing to pra continue to practice. 
So Gotame and the 500 women were disappointed, but not deterred. And so all of them shaved their heads and put on clothing that was like robes, monastic robes, and, and then followed the Buddha and his monks to their next destination, which was Vaishali, Vaishali. And this was not an easy journey. I looked it up on the internet, and it's more than 200 miles. And some accounts say that along the way there were people who helped these women, gave them food and so forth, and also offered them chariots, because they knew that many of them were royal women, and they didn't like to see them walking, so they offered them chariots. But the women refused. They wanted to walk. And they were walking barefoot (laughs) for 200 miles. So that's tough. But they did it. They reached Vesali, and once there, Gotami again approached the Buddha and requested him to give ordination, and he again replied as before. But this time, Ananda intervened, and it seems he was really touched by their sincerity, their determination, and also he, uh, it seems... Uh, Gotami was was a family member. It may have been an aunt or grandmother. It's not completely sure, but she, you know he was part of the same family. And so he asked the Buddha uh, if women can attain the fruits of the holy life, such as the different stages of stream entry and so on, up to arhat, attaining nirvana. And the Buddha said, yes, they can. And Um, Ananda also asked the Buddha about previous Buddhas and how many assemblies of followers they had. And and the Buddha said, oh, they had four, you know, fully ordained monks, fully ordained nuns, lay men, lay women. And um, Ananda also spoke to the Buddha about Gotami's kindness, how she looked after him, Uh, after his mother passed away um, when he was only seven days old, one week old. So after this conversation, the Buddha agreed to accept Gotami and the women into the monastic community. And it's not clear why he initially refused. And there's different opinions. I'm not going to go into all of that. (laughs) Because some some say that, oh, he was reluctant to admit women. He didn't really want nuns. But that doesn't make sense because there are several statements the Buddha made expressing his intention to have the fourfold assembly. So one of these statements was made shortly after his enlightenment. He was approached by Mara, who suggested that he pass into Parinirvana then and there. He said, why don't you just, you know, attain Paranirvana now. And the Buddha said, no, I want to um, establish these, this fourfold assembly. So this is even before he started teaching. He already had the intention to have fully ordained nuns as well as fully ordained um, monks and lay followers. And he made another statement um, later, just before he did pass away, um, where he where he said, oh, you know, now I'm satisfied that I did establish this fourfold assembly. So it was clear that that was his intention. Um, and just something from Bhikkhu Analayo, who's done a lot of research into this whole issue. <coughs> he said the Buddha. The Buddha's refusal to grant women the going forth could have originally been an expression of apprehension that conditions were not yet ripe for this move. It could have reflected concerns regarding how to accommodate women living the holy life in celibacy as homeless wanderers at this early stage in the development of Buddhist monasticism when safe dwelling places for Buddhist monastics were still scarce and public recognition not yet widespread. So this is a view that many scholars have, that you know, initially the conditions were just not ripe and ready for uh, admitting women to the order. And also there's a lot of discussion about the eight uh, guru dharmas, or heavy rules, that the Buddha made as a condition for the nuns to uh, enter the order. 
So he asked the Gotami and the other nuns to follow these eight rules. Um, but these eight rules place women in a subordinate position to the monks. Um, so people question, you know, did the Buddha really make these eight rules or were they later added by misogynist monks? Um, and usually in the Vinaya, the Buddha would make rules only after there was some kind of infraction, some kind of misbehavior. You know, a monk or nun would do something naughty and then the Buddha would say, oh, you know, that's now a precept. You monks and nuns cannot do that behavior. Um, so usually he wouldn't make rules before uh, such a behavior happened. And one idea, one possibility, is that the Buddha did make eight rules and asked the nuns to keep those eight rules, but they were rules for their protection and not for their subjugation. But then later, the wording of the rules may have been changed by the monks um, in order to make sure that they were in a subordinate position. So that's a possibility, and we don't know for sure. Um, nothing was actually written down for about 300 years and after the Buddha's Parinibbana. So there was possibility that things could be changed. Um, and again, Bhikkhu Analayo says, the eight guru dharmas appear to result from a textual development whose final outcomes are different from what might have well been their starting point. So he acknowledges there could have been changes to those, but we just don't know. It's speculative. And there's also different versions about how the ordination happened. Did Gotami alone get ordained first and the other women later, or did they all get ordained together in a group? And in the Dharma Guptaka Vinaya, it has the latter version. So I'll just read it because it's quite beautiful. Um, so the Buddha and Ananda were having this discussion inside somewhere and the women were waiting outside. And then Ananda went outside and asked the female disciples, the Buddha has declared eight principles to be respected. Are you able to receive them respectfully? On hearing these words, the women were filled with joy and delight. They requested Ananda to return and tell the Blessed One, Today we have received the Blessed One's gift of the teaching, and we shall receive it respectfully. Ananda reported these words to the Blessed One, and the Blessed One said, Thus they have already obtained the higher ordination. <laughs> so, so that version says that all, all the 500 women, including the Gotami received ordination together. So, and then following that, the, uh, the Buddha proclaimed Gotami as the leader of the nuns' community. So he said, um, Nuns, from now on in this life, you should consider Mahaprajapati Gotami as responsible for the community, as the eldest of the community, as the leader of the community. So you may remember in one of my first BBCs, I, t I told this story that um, there was a previous life in which um, Gotami uh, witnessed another Buddha saying such words about another nun, and she developed this strong wish that in the future she would be such a person. She would be an aunt to a Buddha and would be um, declared or proclaimed by that Buddha to be the leader of the nuns community. So she got her wish <laughs> after many lifetimes. So um, after this establishment of the nuns community, then large numbers of women joined the order of the nuns and they practiced very ardently and many attained various stages of the path, including our hardship. And Gotami herself um, attained that state. She became an arhat, attained nirvana. So I will share that story in another BBC. So for now, let's rejoice that Gotami and the other um, 500 Shakya women had the courage and determination to continue requesting the Buddha for ordination. And the Buddha did accept them. And this has become a very um, beneficial event 
for thousands or maybe millions of women since the time of the Buddha up until the present, including us who now have the opportunity to live as nuns in the Buddhist community. <laughs>